Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Dwarf Fortress. It is currently the fourth of Felsite in late spring of the year 52. I've let a little bit of time pass since the last episode so that things would move forward. And move forward they have because we have just received a ginormous migrant wave. Holy cow. We went from 18 dwarves, which was our 17 regular colonists plus one person who petitioned us, to all of a sudden 45. A ginormous migrant wave. So things are going to change kind of quickly here in the fortress. First of all, roof is getting assembled much faster than it was before because we've got some more hands ready to go for that, which is great. I've expanded our farming area over here just to be in a position where we're ready to deal with the extra food load. Although right now we're still perfectly good on food and drinks, so I'm not concerned. But we thought, well, we might need it soon and at least digging out through soil doesn't take very long. So we may as well set up the extra farm plots. That's perfectly fine. As we descend down our ramp, which is totally functional and it was never broken, we still get to our floor over here where we've got our um, our animal husbandry. We've got our pig pen here and our turkey farm, which has indeed gotten the eggs. I think the eggs that were here that were being un uh, automatically forbidden, I think they may have been fertilized eggs. Um, and that was being flagged that way, because if I check some of these other nests, so we've got eggs in here and they're not being auto forbidden. So I think that's what the system in any case, we've got plenty of turkeys now. So it's great. I've just gone ahead and unforbidden the door. So our dwarves are in here moving some things around and getting things organized. So we're going to get a constant supply of eggs, not to mention a little bit of meat and some leathers and stuff from uh, butchering the turkeys as um uh, as, as they're born and as they grow up. Um, and then the same thing theoretically will start to happen with the pigs soon, but the population is still slowly growing. We need to get this to a critical mass, but, Constant supply of meat and leather should be in the cards now. We go down to our original exploratory digging tunnel, which didn't find us any iron ore, but uh, still found some other things which will be useful. And then down, down, down to our trade floor, still all boxed off. And this was our second exploratory floor where indeed we have found tons of magnetite, which is exciting because now that we've got more people in here, we're probably want to get started on, on equipping a military. And it would be great if we could make the jump immediately to steel. Well, maybe steel weapons. Armor might be a little tricksy because one of the things is if you equip dwarves in heavy armor, if they don't have the armor skill, they will move extremely slowly. Um, every point of armor skill dramatically decreases the penalty from the heavy armor to the point where like they don't have to be god tier. I think like five points in armor and all of a sudden you're like, yeah, you, you might move. You're still moving tiny bit slower than base, but uh, it's perfectly fine. Um, so we might still do a, a squad initially with leather armor, but at least we could do steel weapons if we wanted. We might do range stuff. Last fort we did, we did pure melee. We might do um, a mix of range and, and melee in this squad. We'll see, especially if uh, going back to the surface for a second, if I build little towers, like little archery towers that people can fire out of, we might do something like that. Going down to our production floor, things haven't really changed here. I am planning that probably in this episode, what I might do is tear down our um, our stockpiles and make little, um, you know, custom custom stockpiles for, uh, that meet up with each one of these workshops. We even might consider moving some of the workshops around. I've gone ahead and opened up the digging for the workshop areas in the northern stockpile area here uh, to help facilitate that. And we might, you know, just just try to focus areas on certain things. For example, if we are starting a metal industry, I might want to make sure we've got a crap ton of smelters. And since they're not magma smelters, we might still need multiple wood furnaces. Honestly, I'm actually wondering if I do like four wood furnaces, four magma or four smelters, even though that's probably more than we need, but it'll be available to maybe ramp up some production. I don't know. And down one level here, our bedrooms got all smoothed out and equipped. And with the migrant wave suddenly showing up, I've started smoothing the other side because we only have 24 functional bedrooms right now. We do still have the, the dormitory on the upper floor. So the people without assigned bedrooms will still have a place to sleep right now. I mean, we don't have a bed for each dwarf in the dormitory, but that's fine. They don't go and sleep all at the same time. Um, and uh, yeah, I had to expand the stockpile for the booze. And in fact, it's still completely full and we still have some booze barrels in our still that aren't uh, going anywhere. So I think uh, despite my desire to keep things at the sort of shelf layout, I think I'm going to have to accept that this stockpile is going to grow some more. So um, I'll do that anyway. Keep a, like a little walking path around here, but I suspect these stockpiles will all get mushed together as we go forward. Anyway, let's go ahead and unpause. 
Now, I would like to highlight another dwarf today, but I thought what I might do is take a look at some of our labors over here and then consider maybe looking at a dwarf as a result of that. Because of course we've got plenty more people in, maybe we got some more people with skills uh, that are relevant to something or other. Uh, mining wise, we've got our two legendary miners. They're doing a great job. I'm not too worried about that. I wonder, hold on, Bard of Blarney, can we replace you as a manager? Well, I, maybe we'll take Asab, one of our new our new migrants. They will get nicknamed at some point. Maybe I'll move you into the manager role. And then I guess I have to reassign the office as well. So Bard Blarney doesn't need any more, but Asab does. There we are. So that gets rid of that message. Perfect. Um, and with more dwarves coming, I don't remember when you start getting like a mayor and all those things. Also, why is it just me or is the game like not making any noises? I guess it's just... Oh, there it is. Okay. It was just quiet for a second. Yeah, there we go. Now I can I can hear the music and stuff. Okay, good. I was like, hold on. Did I did I screw something up in my settings? We're good. Anyway, so that'll free up our miner to just focus entirely on that. That makes me happy. Woodcutter. Goose here is still our carpenter and woodcutter. Uh, is back to doing it in a dedicated way uh, just to make sure to keep up with things. I actually don't think there's a lot of carpentry currently in the queue at all. Um, although I guess you're still making potentially bins, barrels, possibly buckets, although most likely less so. Um, and we are going to need a bunch of beds shortly. So Goose is going to be busy again soon. It's going to be fine. And in particular, I think the wood cutting is going to be quite busy as we ramp up our smelting and our, um, our wood furnace, especially. Hunter, so Lord Warfire has been going around hunting in the surface, doing a great job for themselves. We've also got a new migrant here that's actually quite good. Um, arguably better than Lord Warfire. We could replace um, our hunter, or we could have both. I don't know if we need two hunters. Maybe I should just move Lord Warfire to something else. I wonder if Lord Warfire has any other skills happening. Um, if I search for war, you know, do you have any skills, desires, anything? No, you haven't really done anything. You just showed up with your combat skills and that was about it. Which is maybe fine. All right, I know. Right. Oh, right. Um, we also, with the new migrants, we have a request for a farmers guild. Right, I'm pausing because I'm like, hold on, we need to make sure to not let that go by. That would be bad. Uh, okay, things being slaughtered. That's fine. Like, what's dying? Let's keep going through these labors here. So I'm going to leave the hunter's job as is uh, planter. We've just got um, we've just got the one Theodolus is still classified or still uh, listed as a competent planter and has got the farmer job over here. But Theo is our brewer and is going to stay there. Uh, we might want a second farmer. I mean, right now, our food is still fine, but the farming's not going too quickly right now, partially because our seeds um, aren't really being hauled to the surface very quickly, so our farmers are spending a lot of time walking. I mean, it's either going to be them or a hauler. Either way, the same amount of walking has to happen. Maybe Dodok over here, unless you have a higher skill, and I kind of wish I could load up the dwarves profile on this screen. Let's take a look at Dodok. So I'm going to have to go to this screen and search for Dodok. Luckily, we've got a search function. Thank you very much, DF Hack. And let's quickly take a look at your skills. Uh, no, the only labor you have any skill for is planter. And I mean, it's only novice, so it hardly matters. But yeah, all right, we'll we'll go ahead and assign you to that. That's going to be OK. Um, and we'll make that your exclusive job. Let's let's keep up with the planting, please. And thank you. No one's assigned to fishing, which I'm totally fine with. Uh, no, one, it's everyone can do plant gathering. We don't have it selected. Everyone's still got smoothing turned on. Uh, we might change that later. We still don't have an engraver, which is a bit unfortunate. It would have been great to have someone join us with engraving skills. Um, so that we didn't have to start that from scratch. Carpentry is still goose over here. Stone carver, uh, the stone carving job is the one that makes furniture. Right now, we still just got the one. No one else has got some skill. And so, especially with the bedrooms, they're going to be busy in a second carving out some more cabinets, doors, that sort of thing. So that's okay. Brewers, just Theo. And I think that's perfectly fine. I think one brewer is okay. One mug crafter who's got reached a legendary status. So they're just cranking out um, masterwork mugs like crazy, which is perfect. Um, we do have someone who he has an adequate gem cutter. I went and enabled this job here 
Although we don't actually have a jeweler's workshop set up to cut gems yet. So I'm not, not too worried about it. We don't have anyone gem setting skills. I don't remember. I got to check out the wiki to remind myself if the gem setting skill ma matters. I think cutting does because I think you get a quality of a gem from cutting. I'm not sure it matters for setting. Oh, so I fixed my typo. Animal training. We're still I, I'm still looking forward to setting that up in this fortress and really experimenting with the animal training this time. But we are not not going to get started on that yet. All right. Wood burning Persian Aurora here, who is flagged as a fish dwarf and we're not interested in them doing fishing. We have got enabled as a wood burner and we do have that general goal of trying to reach um, something like 150 coal in general from the wood burning job. Uh, so they're going to get started on that. Uh, if we did a furnace operators, then one of the things we can start doing is also producing um, like the, the the refined coal from the raw bituminous coal that we um, shipped out with. We happen to have uh, Richie here, who is a high master furnace operator, so they'll work quite quickly. Astesh, one of our new joiners, is an, only a novice fur, uh, furnace operator, but it is what's in their title here, so they clearly don't have any other higher up skills. So I thought, you know, we'll turn that on. We could use this. Right now we only have one furnace, so having two... I mean, some of them might be idle sometimes. It's not the end of the world, but I think we are going to be making more furnaces. And we're probably going to want a lot of dwarves working on that later on. We still have no one with any skill in weapon smithing or armor smithing, which is very armorer smiths. Come on, Quill. Armor smith. Boom. And oftentimes I spell armor with a U. I'm very inconsistent. I mean, and that's such a Canadian thing to be very inconsistent as to whether we use the U's or not in those words. Um, we do have a high master metal crafter. Now, metal crafts, I think, are like are like the stone crafts, like the 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 like a lot of the sellable whatsits and things like that, like making you know golden goblets and things. Um, I actually don't know if we're gonna need a metal crafter. I'm, I'll have to check the page to remind myself if there's anything relevant there, but I'm not sure. And I did check blacksmithing. Blacksmithing is the metal crafts that's actually like for furniture, right? If you're making buckets, statues, bins out of metal, right? As opposed to wood, it's the blacksmithing job. So this actually is much more likely to be something useful. And we do actually have an adequate blacksmith now. Um, so I'm not gonna enable it right now because we're not gonna set up any jobs, but that's a little bit of a run of our things. So I thought that maybe, I don't think we've taken a look at um, Mindast, Dak. I'm sorry, I, I know I butchered your name. I don't think we've taken a look at you, and you are a legendary stone crafter. So let's take a look at you. You say mind, might be mind. Mind, uh, Stendak? Yeah, I'm not sure. Who's currently listening to a story? So you're a 79 year old woman. Wow. I can't remember what the, um, the sort of like old age death age cap is for dwarves and dwarf forges. So I don't know, you know, what what this represents. You might be middle age. You might be quite old. I'm not certain. So skills, you do have the legendary stone crafter. You're also a high master leather worker. Holy cow. That's actually just I'm just remembering that we probably we've got a bunch of leather we've traded for and we now have the the, the, the tanning industry done because our butcher shop is in place now. So the hunters are now going to be butchering the stuff they hunt and then we've also called a bunch of other animals you know the the animals we don't care to keep around as well as the excess animals so we are getting a steady supply of leather and again i want to equip my military squad with leather armor first because i uh because it's lighter and that's going to be much more functional and then hopefully you can use that to train their armor skill um wow i don't think we can take you off the stone crafts because high quality mugs is so important but jeepers okay What's your personality like? Natural ability with music, a good kinesthetic sense, and a good feel for social relationships. Poor focus, poor empathy, and a large deficit of willpower, and very little patience. Well, you are socially awkward. Personally, strongly values tranquility and quiet, dreams of mastering a skill, and this dream was realized. So actually, yeah, uh, mind here should be a pretty happy person from that, which is great. Like Cinnabar, maybe we can see Maybe we could put some cinnabar furniture into your, your room. We might, we could consider putting in a, a specific order for that. Let me make a note here. So, mind ass tendak. Uh, this is our mug maker. Likes cinnabar. We'll, uh, we'll consider that. Uh, 
what color white thrones anvils llamas yeah nothing else is really going to be worked around what we'll see an exciting life you want to get into a fight yeah he wants to get into a fight we could put you in the military for a little while but I, d I don't actually know if that's a good idea i don't know if that's the way to look to solve your particular issue um what was your happiness yeah relatively pleased you're in this category over here cool all right yeah, hopefully we can generate more good thoughts as we get our dining hall to be more and more impressive somewhere along the way. Mostly, people are staying quite busy, which is good to see. We do have a bunch more children now, um, so a bunch of a bunch of these um, these migrants that have come in aren't necessarily going to help with the important crafting labors, but that's okay. We've got infinite amounts of hauling to do all the time, so they're going to be very busy. Although, if we take a look at some of these workshops, they're no longer absolutely crammed full with crash anymore which is good because it means things are being moved to the appropriate areas well there's still a lot of blocks in these two workshops i've got a tiny little block stockpile over here that's only two tiles each bin can apparently hold 10 blocks so and i think we're we're targeting something like a uh, hundred blocks to be made total so um two of these bins will be filled and then after that the blocks should move up to the surface which is finally happening because we've got our extra haulers which will assist in currently finishing the roof but also I suspect we're gonna do a lot of construction near the surface here as we build our proper stone wall, for example, maybe some stone towers. So I'm happy to keep the blocks near the surface, but also some blocks a little bit deeper down in case we wanna do some construction of walls and whatnot in our primary fortress. And Zombie Roger, the gem cutter, withdraws from society. I don't think gem cutting is a mutable skill, but indeed we are having our very first um, strange mood. We're going to get ourselves an artifact. I don't think this pop-up is enabled by default. I used to do this manually in the announcements.txt file, but of course now you can tweak the announcement rules in the inside the game itself. And I do highly recommend having these various alerts for the start of a strange mood. And then this one here, when they claim a workshop, claim the jeweler's workshop. I seem to recall that they're not just going to cut a gem. They're going to do something at the jeweler's workshop. And I don't remember what the deal is. Jeweler's Workshop there. What do you grab? You grab the block. You've got some rough amber opals. Rough banded agates. This is the potential to be a very valuable artifact here. And we didn't have any cut gems, but they might not have wanted any cut gems for this anyway. If all of a sudden they stalled and they were complaining about lacking something, what we'd have to do is build another Jeweler's Workshop and then get someone to just cut a few gems. But no, you've begun it. So you've also got some tetrahedrite and some sheep wool cloth. Fascinating. This isn't where we make like scepters and things, is it? No, I don't think so. Huh. All right, so that's been dug out. And then our miners are going back to digging our, um, this exploratory floor, which we don't strictly need anymore, but we may as well dig this out as a lower priority job when it comes up. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, oh, hold on. We might want something else to be dug, though, because I still have that petition waiting for the Farmer's Guild, and I'd like to do some other things, too. So I think one floor below our living quarters, so right over here, I think this will be our guild's floor. And then I think one level below that, which we haven't even accessed via stairs yet, I think that might be our temple floor. And I would also like to get that going on. Um, I'm sorry, we have a... one of our pets died. Fighting the recess macaque. Um, what was the pet's name? Ablo. We see Ablo in this list. I can't see it. So if that was a named pet, that did belong to someone, so someone's going to get quite upset about that. Man, I'm so sorry. Anyway, to come back over here, what kind of structure do we want? I mean, it would be very convenient to just have a bunch of rows of of rooms for our um, for our guild halls, and we might just do that. We've experimented um, in was it the last one? I don't know. We like like weirdly diagonal rooms, right? these sort of diamond shaped ones, just our rooms but tilted forty five degrees. It's it was very it was very neat looking. But it is such a pain in the ass to designate. 
and it's also it was kind of difficult to stack and like figure out where the hallway should go. I mean, there's nothing wrong with good, strong dwarven squares, but I, you know, I do want to avoid falling into the trap of always doing the same thing. But it might just be what we're gonna have to do here. I'm gonna plan out that we'll probably have some hallways like this. Again, I'll probably will for this fortress. We'll probably try to keep the theme of like this this twofold symmetry. In a, just yeah, I mean this again. Not exactly symmetrical here. It's the same area, but then different details, and I think that's going to be fine. Um, and then I want to keep. I want to make our guild rooms fairly large, just because it's going to be easier to make them feel better if they're like that. Do I want to have a double door? Yeah, maybe. 8x15 is pretty large. We could trim out these corners too. Make it slightly more interesting. You know, nothing wrong with that. One of these should also be our hospital slash guild. Kind of a large space for a hospital. But we do make a very good guild hall that way. Um, that's probably fine. off this way. 8 by 15, I think I'm doing. Or is it 16? 8 by 15. We'll just ready to space on the other side as well. I wonder if this would be a good thing to blueprint and have available in Quickfort. I think there's a good chance that each one of my forts might have different shaped and sized um, guild halls. Yeah. So maybe it's not worth it, although it would have saved us a little bit of effort here with who's doing these corner things. I better do the corners even for the ones that aren't connecting anything right now because I'll forget later when I connect it up and then I'll have some rooms that don't quite match. But this is gonna give us a lot of capacity for lots of guild halls. And yeah, I think one level below this is a temple. So we'll start with a, a big generic temple. Maybe, maybe the temple layout will feel very different. I'm actually wondering if on the level below here, right where we build the temple, what if the stairs come down into a large room that is the generic catch-all temple and then branching off of it are the, the temples to the specific gods and sects and things like that. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so we're gonna dig out two because I'm gonna want one for, again, the Farmer's Guild Hall, which has a request, and we'll want one for um, a hospital. We can get some training going on. Uh, we'll block that off, we'll block that off. Okay, I think... I don't think I've made any major disasters here. So while I'm at it though, I will go and order the staircase to be built down one more level. And then once that's done, we'll start planning out what it, what the, the first temple might look like. All right, unpause that. Good. Right, withdrawn. So we'll get our first artifact. So exciting. What are we gonna do with it? Do we want to, let's order up some pedestals. Um. Here, here, just rock pedestal. I mean, or do we smelt a little bit of platinum? Get ourselves some platinum pedestals. I like that. Platinum pedestal. That, I believe, will mean we're going to have to make sure to assign a blacksmith. Although, I just realized these jobs here, I do have the, these set to everyone does this. So no, I'm gonna say uh, only selected will do this. I'm gonna enable it for Captain Semtex here. Although I don't know if I'll make an exclusive job quite yet. And yeah, same thing here, we'll do this. Well, oh, that's, that's, um, Skuld? I don't remember how I'm saying it. Hi, oh, right, yeah, high metal, master metal crafter. And then Richie, who's also a furnace operator, but could do it. It will turn this on, but not do it exclusive because there just might not be any tasks for it. 
let's make two. I don't think we need 10. We'll just make a couple. I mean, ultimately, we might want a pedestal in each one of these, or there might be a bunch of statues. For now, I'll order up a pair. Maybe we'll go pedestals in both of those. We could alternate. All right, Zombie Roger. Ooh, that's loud. Gem Cutter has created Regoth Tillish, an amber opal chain. He offers it to the Machina Sanctuaries. A chain? It's called the Craft of Trusses. Worth maybe 5,000 dwarf bucks. This is an amber opal chain, all craft worship of the high, highest quality. It is encrusted with rose-cut amber opals. The object menaces with spikes of banded agate, amethyst, and tetrahedrite. On the item is an image of the craft of trusses, the amber opal chain in Sheepwool. We've got a recursive artifact. It's got an image of itself on itself, on itself, on itself, on itself. How exciting. Now, it is a chain, which means we could use it to lock up a prisoner at some point, which would be a pretty swanky way to be imprisoned once we set up our criminal system, and maybe. I think the last couple of times we've done the, the dungeon with cages, but oftentimes I did like to make like individual prison rooms with chains as a way to help boost mood of prisoners so that they hopefully don't go and immediately re-go berserk. So maybe we'll do that this time, especially if we're starting with such a swanky chain. We can make the change out of platinum as well and just keep up the, the trend of like, all right, let's try to make these prisons as swanky as possible. We want, it's, it's sort of a rehab, right? Stray cat gave birth to kittens. Right, you've done that, good. This has been caused stolen a bronze bolt. This is very annoying. All right, our roof is up. So now the only door is over here. We could go, speaking of chains, is I could go and chain up some animals over here to do a spotting job. Uh, this would be a little inconsistent. The real trick is to, can, hold on, can I even build on top of a road? Oh, I cannot. That's interesting. Anyway, I was gonna say the, um, what happened, the reason you would chain animals is because if someone is sneaking in invisibly, um, but they move adjacent to one of your critters, any, any critters, any dwarfs, anything like that, if they happen to be adjacent, then they get spotted. And that's the thing, with the hallway here, if it's a high traffic hallway, it's likely going to spot snatchers and thieves regardless. Um, but what you can do is you can chain one animal. It can be anything, but I mean, guard dogs kind of conceptually make sense. Put a chain on one side and chain on the other, because um, from the chain, the, the chain critter can move to any tile adjacent to the chain, or the, I suppose the chain tile itself. And by doing this, it ensures that no matter how they move, there's going to be adjacency vision in all the tiles in this hallway over here, right? Whereas if we just chain someone in the middle, the dog could move here and then someone could sneak in through the south and then get missed. Um, but that's not the case if there's no walls pushing people in, but apparently it's kind of moot because of the road. Yeah, I, I mean, I suspect we'll probably be tearing down these roads in general. I mean, maybe not these, um, when we go and rebuild the wall. Because of course, again, our fortress needs a proper stone wall. This wooden palisade is not gonna be acceptable long-term. But yeah, at least we're roofed up over here, so there's only one way in. We can seal it, although if we did, this piece of coal would get flung into orbit. So that would be a little bit unfortunate, but at the same time, kind of funny. Uh, bedrooms. Smoothing should be happening pretty quickly now, um, unless there's a bunch of outstanding hauling jobs currently. Um, dwarves should become more or less idle. So hopefully smoothing will happen quite quickly, and then, yeah, we'll place the furniture in these rooms afterwards. Um, we could add some more tables and chairs to the dining hall, but again, there's not that many dwarves that will be eating simultaneously at any point. I think they will get cranky if they don't have the opportunity for stuff. I suppose I will go ahead and plan a few more. Again, I want to leave room for our dance hall. Chair. I don't know why my cursor sometimes in Dwarf Fortress goes to like the timing thinking one. I just click out and click back in. No, it's still there. Just Windows doing something. All right. Thanks, Windows. Appreciate it. That thirsty dwarf. We do have drinks, though, so that's okay. And yeah, finish this up. That's groovy. Need buckets. First of all, aren't we making buckets? Pretty sure I have an order for buckets over here. We have less than four empty buckets than do a thing, so clearly we must have four empty buckets or more. I don't know why people can't find an empty bucket unless they're getting pathfinding screwed because of the critters 
in the way. How are we looking wildlife-wise here? Okay, these things have all been caged. And even if we enable the taming fort, I think they stay caged. They might move to this view temporarily unless they lose the taming. We got some sparrows. I mean, things seem okay. Why are you so cranky there? Um, do we see their mood anywhere on this page? I mean, we see the, like, the story here. Exasperated dwelling upon being caught in the rain. Um, do we actually see their, their happy face, sad face somewhere? Untroubled by unmet needs. Hmm. Really need more seeds to be brought up here properly to make our farming go a little bit faster. I mean, again, it's not like we have a shortage of dwarves now that could potentially do hauling. Sleep, socialize, lots of smoothing, which is good. I do want the new bedroom block smoothed out, so no complaints about that. We're going waiting for tables and chairs to be made. So over in a stoneworker's workshop, we should see some things show up in the queue here. Yeah, these are checked off, so yeah, satisfied for the next check. Oh, there they are. There we go. Just looked at a weird time. Tables and chairs are indeed in the queue to do this. And then, yeah, lots of other furniture will soon join the queue. Let's go and load up the quick fort GUI. There's, I'm sure there's a hotkey for that. Go into build mode, place, and place. I'm going to wait for the rest of it to be smooth. But yeah, there you go. The furniture we have sitting around is going to get placed. And then once that furniture gets removed from the stockpile, it'll reissue the jobs to create cabinets and beds and doors. That's good. Start doing more things in parallel. Rock crystal, that's still digging out this floor, right? Yep, okay. Um, all right. Let's redo our stockpiles here. Oh, human caravan has arrived. Okay, hold on a sec. Well, um, I might not get rid of the catch-all, but I kind of think I will go and make this entire area here. Um metal working so i'm gonna i'm gonna remove the catch-all stockpile from this area uh did i have to hit a skip except no it is gone okay but i'm not actually just deleting the stockpile overall a bunch of this stuff is gonna have to get moved so be it so my idea here and we're gonna stay paused because i don't want to well i guess we're not gonna run out of the caravan but nah <sighs> i'm gonna build two wood burning furnaces Maybe I want to get a little glass smelter just so that we have it. And a kiln. I don't know. I feel like we just want a lot of these furnaces. You know, I'm going to go for four. I said furnaces. I meant smelters, but yeah. Okay, that and then the metalsmith. Do I even build two? I was going to say we could have one where we queue up the armor and one with the weapons, but it's all kind of moot right now. Honestly, we probably just need the one because the... The thing we, especially the last four, like we had a pretty involved magma setup, but it wasn't really the actual forging that was the bottleneck. It was mostly the furnace operating, especially for steel. Because again, you got to make the iron blocks, the pig iron blocks, then the steel. So there's a lot of work that goes on there. Oh, I'll put I'll put the two down, and it'll, it'll be a whole area. Okay. Um. Oh, I have to redo the stockpiles too. So what we need. I guess I could have a little wood stockpile here first. Just a tiny one. And then... We'll have an area over here which is going to be for refined coal. So this is a bars block stockpile, but specifically... It's going to be bars of coal. So we're ready to go. Then we'll... Put an area there for, it's going to be stone, but specifically the coal or lignite, which really should be closer to the smelter. That's going to be fine. Okay. And then we'll have another stockpile over here, which, yeah, doesn't have to be anywhere near as big. 
revising what I was thinking. This one here, which actually will be quite big. This is also going to be a stone stockpile, but it's specifically for metal ores. Now, I could set a filter here. I could make it say for only magnetite, for example, which might not be the stupidest idea ever. Because that's the thing we're going to be smelting the most of, and I want to make sure there's lots of room for the magnetite. What I could do is I could make a big magnetite-only stockpile, and then a tiny one for the other things we might use, like a tiny one for the platinum, a tiny one for maybe, maybe for everything else. Maybe I'll just do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to set this to none. Just put magnetite. I'm going to actually, I'm going to leave it at this size. Yeah. And then I'm going to make another stockpile right over here. For stone, that's all the metal ores except for magnetite. And then we're going to have a bar stockpile here, which really doesn't have to be very big. That's like ridiculously large, I think. Um, and yeah, specifically just for all metal ores. Not yet. Yeah, we don't care about the blocks or anything like that. Yeah. Metal bars go there. And then this little area that's left, we can have that be like a little one for armor and a little bit for weapons. But I'll leave it blank for now. All right, let's unpause. And yeah, the caravan is going to arrive here. Let's get ready to set up some trade. So yeah, if I just search for finished, I'm going to mark all the finished goods bins. We'll just bring those. Easy peasy. Okay. We'll probably set up, especially once we get our our fancy like um, mug and mug encrusting set up, we'll probably have a stockpile that gets flagged as auto trade to save us some clicks, but for now that's okay. So a bunch of this wood is gonna have to be moved out here. It's a shame that the wood doesn't go into any bins. I might wanna make, if we might wanna open up this area and just put a big wood stockpile over there. I do have a little wood stockpile there, which is fine. I don't think wood can get into bins. Yeah, it didn't default to any. That's pretty smart. All right, diplomacy with the humans. I don't think we have to ask for leather. I think I should ask for cloth, although they've got their weird human stuff. You know, if it's not pigtail, do we really care? Could just start asking for bars to save us our production time, but feels bad we don't want their armor we don't need to ask for any of this I guess we could explicitly ask for them to bring food for us but it, yeah, I still don't feel the need to do that I know I want the miscellaneous category and then I don't you don't just bring stone do you I don't think well, the stone blocks can I just ask you to bring huge chunks of coal? Like, unprocessed? Now, until you start bringing caravans... Oh, I'm not seeing Lignite. They might not be able to bring that. Until they bring, um, sorry, not caravans, but wagons, they're, they definitely can't bring a lot of rocks. Splints and thread. Yeah, well, you're getting mugs. That's the way it is. That's the way it's always going to be. Again, we want to make sure we're trading plenty to the Dwarven Caravan if we want to keep getting some migrants. Although now, I, you know, at this point, we've kind of got a critical mass of migrants. We're going to have enough um, hands to do more things. There's, gonna, there's enough for, like, one specialist of every job and still have plenty of haulers left over and enough for maybe, like, one military squad. Oh, yeah, which reminds me, the leather setup. So, do I want to trash these buildings here? Yeah. yeah I'm going to tear down these guys. So we're going to move it up there. And yeah, I don't have a leather works yet. I don't have a cloth industry set up. Maybe these four, or maybe up here, Let's say we could go and set up our cloth industry or clothing industry plus leather works, which is not exactly the same, but sort of the same. Are you here to trade? Good. All right. Let's take, you know, we'll take all these bars. The rose, ooh, that's fairly pricey. You know what? Screw it. We're going to do it anyway. Cut gems, new, raw, new. Play. Here, I'll take some. 
case we suddenly decide we want to fire up a kill and we'll have some options. Uh, can't, but I think the ropes, sure, why not? Cloth industry is hard to come by and setting up the whole rope making would be in pain, but... Oh, I was going to consider maybe grabbing some instruments, which I'm assuming these are instruments. And then they can go into the, um, the chests in the tavern. Although some instruments need to be installed. So it's possible those will need that, but... Um, lie, beer, take all that. Should set up a soap industry, especially if we're setting up our hospital finally. Hell, I'll grab a couple more buckets if people are complaining about that. Um, and yeah, otherwise we're going to plan on making our own weapons, clothing. A lot of the human clothing is just too big, so we're not going to do that. Various seeds, sand, I'll skip over. If I were to click on all your bins, oh, it's not even that expensive. Okay, so we'll just be lazy and take all the bins. We had a br already brought a, bought a couple of extra anvils, I think. And of course, we can always craft more if we need it. Meat, plants, leaves, fruits. I don't know why there's multiple different categories of those. Thread to help kickstart our clothing industry. Uh, I assume we can probably buy all this cheese and then these sheets and then hey, we'll grab a few splints and be ready to go. All right. Trade UI, I'm going to go to the Fort Good option. Uh, we're not going to sell this artifact. I'm just going to filter for mugs. And instead of clicking a shift all, what I'm going to do, or uh, instead of clicking like select all, I'm just going to scroll down and shift click, shift click. We'll probably take trade as is there. It's green now. So they probably would have taken it before, but that's fine. So we're going to trade them a certain number of mugs. Trade, lovely. Okay, that's it. We no longer need a broker over here. We got some decent stuff, and we should still have tons of material to trade with the dwarves when they show up, especially since our mug baker is so good in the first place. All right, there we go. We're processing the coal to make some more coke, which is great. Um, out of curiosity, the charcoal jobs from the wood, this big bulk one. Okay, so it won't actually start attempting to make coal out of logs if we have a bunch of coal sitting around, which is fine, I suppose. And we have more than 20 coal, so it's not going to do the second one. Right, and this only operates if we do have some amount of coal. Because you need to use some to refine it. We must, we must get multiple um, bars of refined coals from each bituminous coal. If it's going to use some in the process, I don't, I don't remember. I know you get more of it than lignite. The pig iron bars is working right. We did drop some of these refined coal targets. So in theory, if we have a furnace operator, and we do, we only have, we have the two. We have four furnaces set up, um, which might be a little awkward because there might be a job in one of the furnaces that no one's ever getting around to. But I think it'll overall be fine. But our steel industry is theoretically started. Now, for our clothing industry, for the clothing itself, the loom, the clothier, and theoretically the dyer is all in there. I don't tend to do the dyes, but we'll get set up for it. It feels cool, like the idea of it, but yeah, I don't tend to get around to it. And then the loom, and then the clothier itself. And then we can check on the uh, the tailoring plugin, because I definitely don't want to queue up the orders for like all the like you know, socks and every layer of things. But then under this, we've also got the leatherworks, which I'm going to put right over there. And yeah, we still have a couple of workshops. I guess I can go ahead and put in... I mean, really, yeah, just an armor and a weapon one. Because other crafts can go into, like, a finished goods bin or something like that. Except, so this is going to be armor. Uh, I could make, say, just out of metal, but I'm not going to bother. What we may do... Okay, we might do some things with quality over here. Right now, because we don't have any super strongly skilled stuff, we may just have to accept low quality things. I don't know. We'll see. Because the idea being, we could set up one stockpile for armor that's at least, say, masterwork. And another stockpile 
for armor that is less than masterwork. And then we put on the auto melt thing. So any non-masterwork armor gets dumped in this one stockpile. And assuming it's made out of metal, it will be smelted. And then what we can do is for the stuff that isn't smeltable, like sort of low quality leather armor, maybe we could just include that in stuff we sell off. Obviously your dwarves will go and equip whatever when it's available, but they, I believe they will upgrade if a better piece becomes available, possibly if we hit the update button on their thing. So we could do that from time to time to see about people equipping higher quality stuff somewhere along the way. Uh, oh, leather, okay. So Taylor is running. It's, it, Taylor is running very swiftly over here. Um, so this Taylor, so there's two plugins in DF Hack to handle clothing making for you. Just because there's so many different articles of clothing, mine is kind of a pain in the butt. You could do something where you have an order that repeats once per year, uh, and then you tweak the number equal to your population or something like that to keep, or, or some fraction of your population to keep churning out new clothes on an automated thing. But it is it is one of those things that's very tedious. Auto clothing is is the simpler one that I think tries to maintain a few pieces of gear in your stockpiles that matches. The tailor I believe is a little bit smarter because I think tailor will also kind of combo with clean owned and encourage your dwarves to replace worn out clothing and make things on demand. I think tailor might look at all your dwarves, see who's wearing worn out stuff and queue jobs appropriately that way. So it's quite a bit smarter and more involved. And it will use a variety of different materials depending on what you've got. Apparently it knows we've got a bunch of leather and maybe not enough of the cloth. So it's doing that or it's doing both in parallel or maybe it's because the leather works finished first. So it queued up some jobs there, who knows? But the important thing is this should hopefully keep our dwarves clothed because one of the things that's for a long time, it's very easy to forget to set this up because it is kind of a pain. And a lot of fortresses have involved a lot of naked dwarves running around for, you know, decades. And just generally being miserable. So we got another migrant wave coming in. It, I wonder how big this one will be. If it's as big as the last one, well, we're gonna have to carve out a lot of bedrooms very quickly. Speaking of, let's go and fill these out. But yeah, I might also, actually, I'm gonna start digging Um, digging some more bedroom boxes. I minimize this. And, uh, I'm gonna have to escape out of both. I think I'll do. This way. Oh, oh those were my earlier clicks. Okay. So we're at 56. Okay, we don't need a ton of extra bedrooms. And we got to remember, um, families uh, will often share bedrooms. So even with the migrant wave, we actually might have enough bedrooms. And again, we have the dormitory for a little bit of overflow. But I think it's probably a good idea for us to go ahead and plan for our expansion. Merchants will be leaving soon. That's fine. There we go. We'll get another 24 bedrooms ready to go. Because we want to want to like smooth things out in advance. We don't have to necessarily furnish it, but we can dig it out first, do a bunch of smoothing, and then oh, we'll probably furnish one of these blocks and then leave it there. Now, new migrants might have meant new grazables. So we're going to come over to our pasture. We're going to say, show me only grazers. And yet there's a reindeer bull. I, I was pretty sure I was seeing one in the, uh, the tavern there. We're going to get them assigned over to this pasture and do that. I wonder if we've got any other highly skilled dwarves. Well, that might have to wait until next time. We're 48 minutes into this episode. Feels like a good place for it to put in a cut. And we'll take a look at um, a new dwarf at the start of the next episode. Will it be someone new? Will it be someone who's been here from the start? Who knows? But I appreciate you watching. I'm really enjoying this run. I'm excited to get our, uh, our first military squad decked out fairly soon, I think. And it will probably go leather armor. We could make an archer squad. We could use plain iron to make crossbows. Now you can make crossbows out of wood, but one of the things, your your melee, your range dwarves often like to run into melee or somehow get stuck in the melee at some point, usually from their own volition. When the dwarves enter into melee with their crossbows, they do use their crossbows as um, hammers. And so building the crossbows at a dense material helps them when they get into melee. The crossbow material itself has no impact on range combat, but yeah, 
iron crossbows. Don't, they don't have to be steel, but iron crossbows are probably a good pick to bludgeon things. I don't think you can make silver crossbows. Otherwise, that could potentially be a good candidate as well. But maybe we'll order up 10 iron crossbows and do one range squad uh, to start off with. Range squads tend to do pretty well in the early game. Um, just because of what you're fighting tends to be pretty squishy and unarmored. So even if they're kind of incompetent, it's not so bad. But I think the melee squads tend to be the kings of combat, and we'll probably want to really sort of base ourselves around that concept. One of the things that I don't want to do this time is just like, do a random barracks in a field somewhere. So maybe, maybe we go and plan a guardhouse on top of this, and then build our barracks there right away. Maybe that's what we do. Guardhouse over here. Um, fortifications all around the outside. We probably want to line it with traps, though, because other enemies could come walk up to the fortifications and try to shoot through. Yeah, maybe we do something like that. Well, we'll find out next time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.